My name's Oli Ollerton and welcome to Project Pins. Over the next six months, we're gonna show how we can transform this ex-military vehicle into an overland camper. So I have called in the experts to tell me if my impulsive purchase of this vehicle uh, has been worth the money and the suggestions about what we do, what we can do, how we do it, and if it can be done. Gregor, how are you, matey? Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming along. And this is a beautiful example of a pin scow, a bit different to mine. Yep. But um, yeah, this is, tell me a bit about this, mate. Yeah, they were designed by a very iconic engineering company called Steyr Dame Lepuk of Austria. And they have a unique drive line, which is a spine chassis enclosed drive line which allows each vehicle wheel axle to be independent. This maximizes the traction of the vehicle and they were predominantly built for military customers. They were very expensive vehicles to buy, but you are getting top flight. There are three generations of the vehicle, an early petrol version, uh, and then in the late 80s, they introduced a diesel version, which then carried on production in Austria until 1999. And then the production was transferred to the United Kingdom where it was taken over by eventually by BAE Systems and they continued production until 2007. Yeah. The reality is it's a soft skin vehicle and this in military terms these days is not such a big requirement. And so it's generally used within the military for communications and specialist applications and less in the field, but they still use them as artillery tractors as well. So listen, I went for this one and I bought it at auction um the other week it was a fierce competition but i won man, <laughs> or man. did i win you're going to tell me if i won right, but right. listen the reason i wanted to buy this is because basically for me i just my thoughts are it's already insulated it's already got the back cab which is very different to yours it's got a higher roof and really for me to try and turn this into an overland vehicle i know there's a few challenges ahead main one being weight i think we're yep. correct there but this really for me is is almost once we've got all the crap out is a bit of a blank canvas so i want to tell you today yep. as the expert what yep. i want to do yeah and you're going to tell me if i'm an idiot <laughs> and be quite brutal um and um and we're going to see hopefully we can then get this start the dream happening absolutely so um, okay. well i'll tell you what mate if i have bought a nail you are the hammer <laughs> yeah, I would be pretty pretty brutal with you, but yeah. I'll be honest with you, I've, I've seen many of these vehicles, I've travelled all over the world buying them. Um, you know, the, the truth of the matter is they were really well built in the first place. Do is we'll quickly look, I'll go round, I'm going to just say uh, what we want. We'll have a look in the cab yeah. first, because I'll just tell you what, I'd like, there's not a lot to change in the cab really, yeah. just tidy it up a bit. So let's do that and then we can go in the back and, and, and start from the inside and then okay. work our way around, yeah? Okay, great. So mate, really for internals, I obviously want some decent seats, like the yeah. captain seats with the, the arms. Yeah. That's the main thing in here, but essentially I want to keep this original as possible. This, take that away, put it in, get nice. Um, yeah, sort of a black, that can all be done. Yeah, that can all be done. Sort of engine cover, because that's the engine pretty much. Correct, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a forward control vehicle, which basically yeah. means you are sat next to the engine. It's a huge advantage in off-road driving yeah. because you can pretty much judge the, the terrain that you're trying to get yourself through yeah. a lot better than something with a bonnet in front of it. And yeah. that's one of the main sort of winning factors. And also it maximizes the load bed in the bank. Mm. And the fact that you sat over the front wheels gives you a, lot, a, a, a real better sense of where this vehicle wants yeah. to go and where you where you want to take it. Well, like I say, you've, like I said, you, you've got to sort of remove, you know, mm. this was an ambulance and it yeah. was built as an ambulance. Yeah. But now we're trying to re-identify the vehicle and actually make yeah. it into something which is, so all that would come out. Yeah. Um, we would certainly follow the wiring back to see what needed to stay and what needed yeah. to go. There's a lot of stuff that will be obsolete and out of date on there. But again, there will be some useful points that we can still use. So the wiring would still would still some want to of it, use that yeah, original. exactly. Some yeah. of it there, some of it would be have to be repaired and freshened up. Yeah. But you know, typical for what you would expect to do yeah. for a vehicle that's of this yeah. age and this condition as it is at the moment. I, think, I want to. You tell me if I can do this or not. But I'll be, I want to change the colour. I don't want a white <laughs> Arctic vehicle. So what I was thinking is, like, I want to do it like an olive green. But now 
Because it's got the fiberglass back, would you put a wrap on that as opposed to, you can't paint fiberglass? I don't know. I mean, like I say, uh, we need to look at the back with a bit more detail. You're thinking, I wish I'd not come now. Um, <laughs> you know, it's across my mind. I mean, listen, you know, there's a few of these for sale at the moment, you know, yeah. and you know, you've, you've, you've grabbed it by the horns and yeah. said, look, I'm going to do something with this and we can definitely help you get it there. But then, you know, going around the vehicle itself, it's, you know, it's in good condition. It's, yeah. it's not, it's not bad. Pinscowers are famous, unfortunately, for having slight water traps in them, mm. water spray coming up on the doors here. Um, it's yeah, it's good. good, it's good. You know, I've seen vehicles a lot worse. The other big bonus with a Pinscow is you've got a whopping diesel tank. Yeah, you've right. got good range on. Yeah, them. yeah. Um, How many liters is that? That's 125. There wow. is 141 as well. Jesus. Um, you know, so you know, and I have seen pinscars. I have seen long range pinscars which have got twin tanks, mm. and then another 10 Jerry tins in the back. They're capable of doing over a thousand kilometers. So there were long wow. range pinscars yeah. developed. Clearly shows its identity as an ambulance. Definitely. Yeah, there you go. No expense spared. But well, you can see straight away, like I know what you're going to say, we've already had a bit of a chat. I mean, the weight is ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, and you know, nothing against the guys who built this vehicle, but you know, it was done at a time in the late 90s and it's been done well, but it's heavy, it's robust, and it's an ambulance. Um, and the, it, it all needs to come out. So, I mean, listen, what I want to do with the vehicle, and this is, this is my sort of plan, I sat in here at the weekend and started <laughs> dreaming and, um, what I want to do is this area at the back here, there's going to be a table with a three stage pedestal. You know, the sort of marine yeah. push down. Push down and then lifts up. Yeah. It lifts up. So yeah. basically, it serves as a table. Benches either side here with cushions on. Yeah. So basically, once I push that table down, yeah. then the, the back supports or the back cushions then fold into the middle and then that creates a bed sleeping across this yeah. way because you've got, the, you've got the width. Yeah. Which is a great thing. So that then creates a bed. However, what we're also going to do is we want a roof tent on top okay. as well. So the really, essentially, that is where we'd sleep. But just for instance, if you want to stop at the side of the road, you don't, you don't want to exactly. That You're in off. transit. Yeah. You just get straight in the back. Absolutely. And you can get your head down. Absolutely. So that's what I'd like there. Obviously, all this stuff out, and I want to try and keep some of the original stuff from the vehicle. You know, because you know it's good kit. I mean, these yeah. chairs, repurpose these. So I'd like to put that one up on that side at the yeah. front. So you've got those two sort of um, on either side. Yeah. Um, get them all recovered and make them look pretty. And then just where that other chair is, get rid of that chair, get rid of all that stuff in there like you've suggested. And then the kitchen unit, Yeah. which is going to be essentially just a, a cupboard. Yeah. You know, with a top you can lift up with an induction hob. Yeah. Which we can then, you know, I don't want it fixed. I want us to be able to take it. So it's a nice day. We take the induction hob outside we can, on an extension lead. Yeah, good idea. use it outside. And it's not just purposed as a kitchen then. Yeah. So, and then we've got the top surface which is just, a, just a, you know, like a surface we can do anything on. I know people who've taken these vehicles literally all over the world. Yeah. They ship them in sea containers, they fly out, they tour South America. We've got a customer mm. who's sent one to the United States. Yeah. And, you know, and that's it. And people are getting more and more progressive about yeah. what they're doing with Overland. Yeah. And this is a vehicle that I have spent a lot of time developing, working with some very, very clever engineers who work with me. Yeah. We've done a lot of good work. We've made our mistakes. We've learned as we've gone, mm. but we are huge fans of the vehicle because yeah. we honestly believe we don't think I we'll see it. a drive line yeah. like this again. You know? People as well, I mean, something I'm kind of against is that having a fixed bed. I, I just don't see the point of having a fixed bed. You know, because some people want it, so they've got a bed permanent. For me, that's not important. What's important for me is the fact that we could turn this into a bed inside if we want to, but then we've got the roof tent. You're going to get the views and everything from the roof tent. Definitely. You know, that's where you want to be as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's funny because they had a T5 and this took like me and my wife and William. And um, it was anyone looking on to that vehicle would have sort of thought, well, that kid's run, running the roost there because he had the hole inside on the rock and roll bed. <laughs> and me and my wife just slept outside on the yeah. tent, which was attached to the side. And that's, you know, I much prefer to be outside of it. That's, vehicle. it's a nice way, yeah, yeah definitely. And so, you know, the vehicle would easily accommodate a yeah, roof tent. And, yeah. you know, you just have to choose an access point. It's normally off the back. 
yeah. uh, simple aluminium ladder yeah. that drop down, you know, something you can get to pretty quick. So maybe a ladder that can even be removed and just shoved inside, you know, there's options yeah. there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you've got plenty of space to accommodate a reasonable size tent yeah. up there without yeah. sort of compromising the vehicle's yeah. off-road ability. Yeah. Um, is there anything else we need to know about this before you rip it away from us and, <laughs> and bring it back uh, looking absolutely yeah. amazing? <laughs> No, I, I think the, the, the next thing for us realistically is to, we would start mechanically. We've yeah. got to start there. You cannot start straight into the back. No. Yeah, you can strip it out and that, but yeah. you, you know, you've got to see that make sure that your running gear, your engine, your transmission, all that is absolutely as it should be and up to spec. Yeah. And then once that's put to bed, in between, it also gives people a bit of breathing space to think about what's going on mm. in the back while everybody's working their way through that. Yeah. And that's the point to start. And then, you know, like I say, get the weight out of it. Yeah. Get the weight yeah. off yeah. it. Yeah. You know, it's um, it's a re-identification of a vehicle. Yeah. Um, One last thing. Please. Before you, I, don't, I think you're not going to like this, but talking about on. weights. What about a rear um, motorbike rack? Uh, <laughs> you're not the only person who's asked us that recently. Would um, you put one on the front? No. no. Um, we, we, there is discussions in place with our engineers mm. about that at the moment. Yeah. Um, we think it could be doable, yeah. but we've got to lower the weight of the yeah. vehicle first. We would probably have to, we would have to look at the suspension mm. to make sure that it yeah. is up to it. Um, certainly for transiting, having yeah. a bike on the back, probably would be manageable. Yeah. Um, Off-roading, I would certainly say, no, leave the bike behind. Yeah, yeah. You know, but yes, yeah, so I'd certainly, we, we, we could look at it. Yeah. Okay, man. That's a wish, that's a dream list anyway. Yeah, okay, let's get the big picture all right, going. Let's get, yeah. let's get the thing um, sorted out. But um, all right, mate, well, it's gonna be handing over to you pretty soon. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay, so that concludes part one of the PINS project. Opening of the PINS and um, obviously got SBG um all-terrain here to give us the their opinion on the vehicle and also um we're going to hand the vehicle over to them you're going to see this vehicle change over the next i'm going to say six months i hope it's going to be done before that but we'll see so stay tuned um we want your comments we want you to tell us what you think we should do to the vehicle and we might even listen to you <laughs>